Oh, hey. Hey, Andy. Do you want to buy some weed? Hey. All right. Great. He takes Bitcoin if you're into that. I don't take Bitcoin. You should. We never imagined we would have a show on HBO when we started making this on the web series. Uh, it was just all been a pleasant surprise and gravy for us. We wanted to make an artistic community centered, centered around a project that had a lot of a low commitment level. Actors could come in just for a weekend, maybe somebody could direct or write, and then after working on that and it becoming its own little community, uh, we're really glad we get to make money with our friends and I mean, I, I feel like they're my chosen family in New York, so. We are a bit of a low budget show and I think that our budget actually, uh, while it is sometimes a challenge to you know, work with is also the thing that helps keep us aligned with our with our roots, with our humble beginnings online. Where we, you know, originally high maintenance, I think, was so much um, born out of also restrictions and limitations. Those things really shaped the way that we tell stories. Like Ben just said, you know, only working with an actor for one, only having access to an actor for one day, you know, you know that you're going to have to write, we knew we were have to write something short that could be achieved really quickly in production. And, you know, here we are, we're still doing that. Yeah, it definitely feels like the script is just an, instru an instruction for how you might make the, the scene or the show. But when we're there and we're in a certain space and where the weather is not what we expected, we're very flexible. And I think our flexibility in telling stories and our ability to roll with the punches instead of throwing money at a problem is really what makes it feel the way it does. Yeah, we can't like construct an elaborate set for every scene that we write. Like we are still using real world spaces and, you know, real people's apartments and things like that. And I think that too is you know, that, that comes with its own set of uh, limitations, but also is like the thing that saves us time because you're not having to create something from the ground up, you know, production wise. I like to think of the city as a teacher inflicting patience. How do you say it going? It's not good. On a population addicted to impatience. Oh, oh, like that motherfucker. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it is so great to be back in New York. Our, our characters are very much collages of anecdotes and observations and personal feelings that we might feel inside in our writers uh, that kind of like meet the person playing the part and then they, we try to hybridize uh, that. We try to make as much of what that actor does best come through in the character they're performing. That being said, I think in the beginning, we were really writing for actors a lot more than we do now, partially because we've sort of we've sort of worked with all of our friends who are performers at this point, like anyone that we like has been on the show that we're friends with uh, and some that aren't even actors. So, you know, the, that, that well is a, has run a little bit Wait, dry. Wait, listen, if you're friends with us and you haven't been on the show, we like you. We like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We definitely want to normalize, and that extends like beyond just pot smoking, normalizing pot smoking, but normalizing just everything. <laughs> Making mostly it, taboo things. Yeah, things mostly that are rejected. taboo. But I think I like I want a viewer to watch and feel okay to feel like I'm okay how I am, and and that's sort of the the takeaway I want them to have. So. That's not on. That's not on accident that you're seeing like a lot of representation of different like sizes and shapes and like non-sexual nudity and you know equal opportunity nudity. And it's mostly men that we deal it's with. It's true. It does end up being men a yeah. lot more on our show that are naked in a non-sexual way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so it's so normal, but you're you just don't see it on TV that often. So it you know, yeah, it's why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think so. you can't on most networks, <laughs> right, I right. guess. But I also think actors and I mean people like we're most people aren't comfortable showing their body it's in that weird. way. Because men are so fascinated with their own penises, you think that they would <laughs> want to see more of them on TV. It's so it was so weird that that's kept away. I, I, I mean, there's like, people have a lot of insecurities and shame, and I mean, I'm one of them too. I don't know that I would be so free as as those actors that have been on our show have been, but when they are, it's really cool. Like we have that character Arthur, who's a nudist, and 
we're always like by the end of the shoot, like everyone's remarking like, oh my God, I keep forgetting he's naked. <laughs> like, and that, uh, I think that's a testament to, to that actor, yeah. to Arthur Meyer, that he can just be like so comfortable. Coming out has changed my approach to the show in as much as I'm just really interested in being truthful. I mean, I've always wanted to be truthful in the storytelling that we do, but maybe it just feels more like urgent to me. And I definitely, I mean, it would be weird if I didn't think I want, it would be weird if I wasn't like, I want to see more queer characters. But at the same time, we've always sort of had queer characters on the show. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much my, my creative approach has changed. Not, not that much. Yeah, it does seem like in some episodes, uh, and I think we were talking about this last night or this morning, where it's like you kind of were trying to forecast your future in a lot of ways. That's that actually a, a semi-embarrassing <laughs> reality for me when I look back on old episodes. I'm like, oh, wow, I was like trying to come out actually, and sort of writing my future in a weird way. And with, those are the best episodes. They're personal, so there's something to be said for that, I guess. I got you. Can we please get stoned? Okay, that's what's up. This is going to be a good night. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of pot legalization, you know, there are so many ways it could go that we actually feel kind of like bring it on a little bit because it just kind of lowers the barrier to entry for people who would smoke weed in their lives, you know what I mean? They are the people who go to MedMen once a month and then they buy everything out and then they uh, realize that's too expensive and then they ask their, like, you know, 10-year stoner friend, like, where to get cheaper weed and he's like, oh, this guy. Also, there's this thing right now and it kind of, sh it's in the beginning of the season that Berg is kind of like an an older generation of pot use, an older, like, fighting, freedom fighters generation. And, like, there is a nostalgia for that. The guy is a good friend for some of these people. And it's like a question of, do I want to help my friend or do I want convenience, which is always our modern struggle, is do I want to be a part of a community or do I want to be comfortable and have everything to myself and do it when I want it, how I want it. So... We'll, we'll see, but I think it's a really good, like, issue for our characters if they're trying to order weed w when they have that decision. Uh, the guy's probably not on his bike in the L.A. version of High Maintenance. Or if he is, I don't, I mean, I know people bike here, but it just doesn't feel, like, you can't, the, the, the distances between things are so vast, so I feel like he would only be able to concentrate on, like, the east side or the west side or... You know, it would be his reach would be a little bit more limited, so that I think might narrow the the types of people he comes into contact I mean, with. We maybe. had a friend who did weed delivery yeah. in LA for a while, mm -hmm. and his life was it was actually kind of interestingly structured. He would like drive across town in Santa Monica and wait in a cafe while he waited to get uh, orders, and then he would consolidate all the orders and then drive out. You know what I mean? So yeah. there was just a different rhythm to it. But, you know, it, it, the show's not about pot delivery, really. Right, it's about, about people. And I think, I mean, I think about that sometimes when I'm here, like, just like, who would the, who would the characters be? And I mean, there's, there's enough material here, trust me. Like, there could very easily be, like, the L.A. edition. But we are very interested in how high maintenance would play out in other cities. Like, that yeah. is, like... Because New York, Brooklyn is a character in the show, like, <laughs> it would be really interesting to get to know other cities through personal stories like we, we deal in. Oh, this is the best part. Yeah.